Good to see you all again. We haven't really, I don't think we've played in LA for about a year and a half. Okay. This is a song I wrote about eight or nine years ago. I was uh, living up in uh, Echo Park, up there, sort of borderline of Silver Lake, Echo Park, you know. Before the, uh, before the gates all came tumbling down. Before all that racket started up. Which is cool, you know, I, 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 uh, I definitely remember about 86, there was a cafe up by the Vista called the Onyx. You know, when it was back over by there, and everybody back then was complaining all the time. There's nothing going on, nothing happening. Yeah. And then some stuff starts to happen, you know, some, some cool stuff comes along the way and some people get excited and interested and people start moving in and restaurants opening up and, and then everyone's complaining. There's all these people coming in, opening up restaurants. There's all these things going on, you know. So, I think it's cool. It's cool to see it all coming of age because it was kind of desolate over there for a while. But this was written um, back before the uh, days, before Spaceland. I don't remember if you all remember Fuzzy Land, Jack Zinder, and all that. And. Uh, this was written back then and uh, took place at a house I was living on with a revolving cast of people, you know, just coming and going. And it was um, New Year's uh, 90, I think. 90, at the, right at the dawn of the 90s, before. Uh, and. Uh, it was one of those parties, one of those get-togethers I know you've all had, been to, are going to this evening, hopefully. And uh, much uh, alcohol is imbibed and all kinds of recreations are create out of, created out of thin air. And uh, it was on, on the end of one of these nights when this young lady came in. And uh, she, was, uh, she was all in leather. She had black leather boots and black leather skirt and black leather jacket and lacy frilly kind of goth thing going on and black goth tights, you know, and some studs, big black hair and black eyelashes, but she didn't have any, she'd shaved off her eyebrows and she had these perfectly architecturally designed and sculpted on, painted on eyebrows. These, uh, and that just put it over the top, you know. And this is back when uh, goth was retro at this point, I think. For the, Second time. And uh, she was cool, man. I, and you know, these certain moments in the evening when you get to uh, certain pieces of the puzzle come together and parts of the equation add up and uh, you realize you've, you've been through this futile, fruitless evening for a purpose and you just kind of grab that purpose out of thin air. And my, uh, my purpose, my uh, un, uh, how do you say? It was fate, really. This purpose to lick these eyebrows off of her head that have been perfectly rendered on her head. <laughs> 
And uh, so she came up, walking up, and uh, big old boots stomping on the hardwood floor. And uh, there was some music on, some aggressive 1990s sounds, probably a record cover with a bunch of hair flying all over the place. You didn't know who was playing the music or making the music. You go to see the band and it was all hair. And uh, so these sounds are coming on the radio and, or on the stereo and she comes up and I make my way over to her and you know I, I place myself in position and I launch myself at her just to get her at the right time. You know, she had a leather, she had a lot of armor. You know, she was pretty well in there. So I, I leaped at her. I got about two centimeters from the left eyebrow, I think. And she made some movement. She, I think she lurched at me or something. She was coming right back at me. And I fell backwards with her on top. Little did I know there was a, another late night reveler was making his way across the room on his hands and knees, walking right behind me, right at that minute. So instead of stumbling back, we both went back over the guy who was down on the floor. And uh, she came crashing down on top. And then I heard my body crack into three. There was three of me, or there was three pieces of me hanging. And uh, I was just kind of dazed and I, and I stood up for a second and I felt one half of my body hanging off the side and the other one over there broken my collarbones. And uh, then I just kind of fell into a pool, liquid, liquidated onto the floor. And then next thing I remember, New Year's Eve, riding down Sunset Boulevard in a Mercury Cougar with the top down. The wind blowing in from all sides and I'm in the back seat of her car and I don't know where she's taking me. And I guess at that point I didn't really care. She had a bottle of Maker's Mark. No, no, it wasn't Maker's Mark. It was, um, what the hell's that stuff called? Ancient, ancient, um, uh, ancient, ancient, ancient. See, she had a special thing going. She was, she was working, she'd been working up to for years. She had ancient, 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 ancient age. She got it through a special connection. And, um, you know, County Hospital here in LA is a fabulous place to visit on New Year's Eve. There's a, there was one guy who, who, uh, got filled up, got uh, shot up with an Uzi on one side. The other guy looked like he was uh, ringing in the new year with five sticks of dynamite in his hand or something. Uh, it was carnage. It was beautiful fluorescent lights. They have really great lighting down there in the emergency room down there. And uh, so this was... Uh, Kind of wrote it after that night. Well, I, after the bones healed and doctors glued me back together. And it was called Lampshade. And uh, I wish that, that that's what I'd done, just stuck the lampshade on, on top and called it a night. Oh, actually, as a, um, as a postscript too, there was, I was recuperating, I lived in this little little back house, and it was like a little boat. The, the bed was uh, built into the wall, like a, a, a little, little loft bed, you know, but it was, for some reason, they put it up about, you know, about five and a half feet up. So you had to run about three feet and then jump into it. 
which was a really, man, you should have seen me trying to get in there. Going to the bathroom and back, it was like, a, took about two days. And uh, there was a little window, like a little port, uh, like on a ship, right, right next to the bed in this little chubby hole loft, loft bed. And one night I was in one of these recuperation deliriums in these, out of nowhere, out of a dead, just dead night. Three cats, right, right at the window, started eating each other alive, and it was just like, I don't know, it was like, no, like, but, but, three, you know, maybe it was just a whole pack just got this explosion of cats right there, and out of dead sleep, I flew out of the bed. That was my first instinct, and uh, broke the bone again. This is kind of how I was feeling in this, in this time after all this occurred. When you start making music and putting out records and going on tour, it just gets a lot less interesting. And stuff doesn't happen too much. Well, thank God. Well, I don't want no crying. All I'm on my sleeve I just want somebody I've got no place to be You could call me up on Tuesday I'll be stuck on Sunday night Looking for some good things to Make me feel alright Wrong harmonica. When I snap my fingers, when I walk the line, when I get my money, I'll be killing time. Cause time is killing something. Just too small to care Running through the jungle Looking for your Someone's talking backwards Looking for a fight Put it on a lampshade Cause you're shining much too bright I don't want no crying I don't want no pain I don't want no lonesome life Unable can change 